يا ايها الذين امنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاه ان الله مع الصابرين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين my brothers and sisters, sometimes life becomes so difficult and sometimes the challenges in our lives begin to overcome us due to our weakness of some sort. Subhanallah, Allah knows this. People begin to think of the worst and sometimes people start thinking of suicide. People want to take their lives away, not realizing that by taking the life away, we're not going to solve the problem. Many people who were in greater hardship than you are have come out of it after a year, two years, or a few years, or a decade in such a way that they would have never believed to see the success they saw later on. Had they taken their lives earlier, they would have lost out on a lot of goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what great a loss a person who kills himself would actually go through. And this is why in verse number 29 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah prohibits suicide completely. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is no way that you should ever think of, consider or take your life away. Because Allah is far more merciful than what you think. So Allah says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Don't kill yourselves. Don't take your own lives away. That's a very clear-cut verse. Verse number 29 of Surah An-Nisa. Why? Because Allah says, Allah is indeed Rahim. He is merciful upon you. You're a believer. You believe in Allah. These challenges will come to pass. Live a day at a time. Go through it because Allah will never allow you to go through that which you cannot cope at all. There is always a way out. Find the way, look for it, speak to someone, confide in those who are trustworthy. Make sure that you have confided in Allah to begin with, he knows your problem, but you keep on praying to him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors. So this was a clear cut verse telling us suicide is prohibited. There is no way you should think about it. No matter how big your problem is, no matter how big your disaster is, there is no scope for this as a Muslim and as a believer because Allah's mercy is far greater than the problem and the issue that you're going through. If you were to take your life away, you would meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he would be very, very upset or angry. So may Allah make it easy for us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help those who are going through challenges. I know as a human being, sometimes people go through so much a lot of it is connected to how others are making your life difficult. I know this happens and I know sometimes people think I wish this could end and that's how it starts and after a while they start thinking well maybe I should take my life away. Remember that is not an option. There are other ways of resolving the matter. Be strong, be steadfast, be firm. Allah will show you a way. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. Amin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us thereafter that, you know, I've given everyone a different level. I've given every gender different specialities. So I've also given people different amounts of material items. I've given people different amounts of various things I've chosen and I've distributed. It was me. So Allah says, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ Don't desire, don't wish for that which we have given others when we have raised some above others. Allah's given someone something. Allah's created different races. Allah's created different sizes, different shades of skin on one hand. Different levels of intellect. Allah's created different roles for everyone to play. So Allah says, you know what? Don't become depressed by wishing and wanting that which Allah didn't give you, subhanAllah, especially when it comes to something natural. 
If Allah didn't make you, for example, in a certain way, that's okay, subhanallah. Be happy with Allah's decree. Be happy with the way Allah has made you. Be okay with your hair, with your looks, with everything else. Be fine with it. That's how Allah wanted to make you. Unless there is something absolutely abnormal, which you would be allowed to rectify and to correct. Don't even tamper with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's telling this to us in a beautiful, beautiful way. You want comfort? Just be happy with the way Allah's made you. You don't need to hide. You don't need to be embarrassed about your, your skin tone or the type of hair you have or how Allah has made you. Subhanallah. Just be happy. And this is why in Islam, we're taught to dress modestly and not to show off what we have in order not to create some hurt within the hearts of those who may not have. And it becomes a rat race where everyone is racing to look a certain way, to be a certain way, etc. When they don't realize Allah wants you to be different. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. The reason I mention this is many people lose their comfort. Many people plunge themselves into crisis because of thoughts. Thoughts of, I don't like the way my fingers are. I don't like the way my nose is. I don't like the way this is, that is. And I'm not too happy with this and too happy with that. Be excited about the way that Allah has created you. You know what? Those who are genuine will love you for exactly who you are and how you are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who are always genuine. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks of difficulty in marriage. And he's spoken about this in many places in the Quran. I guess it's because it happens a lot and a reminder always helps those who believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us if you're fearing that there may be a split in the relationship of marriage, then if both of you really want to solve the problem, it is resolvable. It can be solved. The condition is both of the parties need to want to solve the problem. The intention should not be to pick on someone. The intention should not be to battle who was right and who was wrong. But the intention, Allah says, should be we want to go forward. We want to solve and resolve the matter. This intention is so noble, if both parties are sincere in it, they will be able to resolve the matter. The problem is, when one party doesn't want to solve the problem, then you'll never be able to solve the problem. Although the context of this discussion is within marriage, but it applies to any conflict. People who have a situation or a conflict with others, if both parties are keen on resolving the crisis, you will achieve comfort you will achieve solution. But if one party is not sincere, there is no chance that you will have an everlasting comfort or solution to your crisis or problem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Verse number 35 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, if both parties would like to resolve the matter, then definitely Allah will grant them the acceptance to solve the problem. And Allah says, be charitable, be good, be kind. Who should I be kind to? Listen to this verse, verse number 36. وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Don't associate partners with him and be kind to your parents. So the list starts with Allah. Be good in your relationship with your maker. Worship him alone. That's what Allah says. Don't associate partners with him. That's the biggest sin you could commit. Allah says you want peace. You want comfort. First things first, your relationship with Allah. After that, be good or kind to your parents. Notice Allah didn't say obey your parents because obedience is for Allah. Your parents, if they were to tell you something within the obedience of Allah, it's okay. But some parents, they are human as well. They make mistakes. They do things that perhaps are not correct sometimes. They might be abusive. They might be wrong. Allah says, you don't have to listen to them when they are wrong, but you have to be kind to them whether they are right or wrong. You have to respectfully disagree with them when they are wrong. You have to kindly Excuse yourself when they're asking you to do something wrong. So Allah says, remember to be kind to your parents. I think this is a powerful lesson because people mix obedience and kindness. Many parents say, 
you have to obey me because Allah instructed you to obey me. That's wrong. Allah did not instruct us to obey our parents where they are wrong, where they are being unreasonable, where they are being un-Islamic, ungodly. No, Allah says be kind to them, smile and disagree. Subhanallah. Many parents themselves have issues they need to deal with. Many parents themselves don't have a good relationship with Allah yet. So how do they expect Allah to be pleased with a child who will obey an instruction that's against the commands of Allah? Allah tells the child here, be kind to your parents, be respectful to your parents, but you don't have to be obedient when they're telling you to do something wrong. As simple as that. So the list starts with Allah, it moves on to parents, then Allah says, وَبِذِلْ qurba." Then be kind to your relatives. Be kind to the orphans, be kind to the poor and the needy, be kind to your neighbors, be kind to the ones who live next to you and those who are with you, next to you at all times and the wayfarer. The wayfarer meaning a stranded person, a person on the streets, a person who has no abode, a homeless person, a person who's trying to get from point A to point B but they're stranded. Allah says be kind to all of these people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he doesn't like those those who are arrogant, those who are haughty, those who uh, are disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, if we would like goodness and kindness, if we would like comfort, be kind and respectful to the following categories. Your parents, then your relatives. Even if they are nasty people, what's stopping you from being kind and respectful, even though you might keep a bit of a distance? No harm in keeping a distance, but be respectful. And then Allah says, be kind to the orphans, be kind to the beggars, the poor, the needy, be kind to your neighbors, make sure that you're very, very good to your neighbors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. And then he says, be kind to Ibn al-Sabil, a wayfarer, a person who's lost, a homeless person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us develop this kindness so that we can achieve comfort. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين